Hello everybody and welcome to another watercolor tutorial. Today we're going to be painting this uh, nature tree landscape. I saw this picture online and um, I wanted to replicate it um, so I'll link the reference the name of the reference in the description of this video. The first thing you want to do is draw out your trees with pencil. Don't worry about making the lines um, really light because uh, we want them to be darker just because we're going to be painting over them and we want to see the outlines of our trees. But if you're confident enough, you don't even have to draw trees, you can just paint them on afterwards. But the first thing we're going to be doing is painting the sky or the, the background of our painting, I suppose. And um, just going off of this picture that I'm looking at. It's going to be a yellowish, nude, stormy kind of painting, so I'm going to do it at the horizon line, halfway, I would say. Um, and I'm just painting a fairly straight line from one end to the other. And I'm just extending that with water. Kind of creating a gradient almost and then actually I'm just gonna fill the entire top part with water so it's a little bit hard to see where I've painted the water so I just added a little bit of the nude color just so I can see. I think that's about good. Um, okay, so while this is still wet, and that's pretty important, uh, we're gonna start adding some of our details. So I'm just taking yellow mixed with a little bit of brown or orange and just dabbing that about an inch above the horizon line. And these are going to be our clouds, our stormy clouds. So you don't have to be super precise, just kind of dab a paintbrush. I'm just using my size 14 by Grumbacher. Grumbacher, never know how to pronounce that. And I'm also going to take a little bit of a darker color, perhaps mix a little black in there and just dab the bottom portion of our yellow clouds because I want to make it look like there's this mean shadow coming from the bottom of the clouds. I'm also going to do the same for the top. And then I'm going to go in with my yellow again because it has faded a little bit. I guess I'm content with that. And I'm just going to try and blend some of that nude into this. Just to the top so it doesn't completely look like, you know, it's not fading into anything. I know this looks like a toddler painted it, and honestly, a toddler probably could paint this. But um, like most of my paintings, I'm hoping that this just kind of comes together at the end. So we're gonna let this dry 
Um, and actually, sorry, one thing I'm gonna do before we let it dry. I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue at the top. Very, very light blue, like so. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So let this dry and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so once that has dried, we're gonna do the bottom part of our background. So this is going to be a water reflection. So again, we're taking blue and just meeting the horizon line. It's okay if you go over it a tiny bit because we're gonna go over it with a darker pigment later anyways, but I just wanna lay down the base blue first so that we have something to work off of so that we can utilize our wet on wet technique. And the bottom is going to be significantly a significantly darker blue. So that's why I'm going in with a darker blue or if you don't have a darker blue, that's fine. You can just uh, use more pigment and less water since we watered down the top portion quite a bit. So I'm just going in with that darker blue on the bottom while my background is still wet. And on the left side, I'm just bringing it up a tad. even streaking it a little bit to make it look a little bit more realistic like water. I'm going to just make it a little, little, little bit darker at the very bottom. There we go. And working a little bit quickly while that's still wet up top here, we're gonna grab green mixed with a little bit of black and just go over this top part here. I'm overlapping it ever so slightly with my horizon line just so it's as straight as I can make it. And I'm just kind of going over it here. The idea is that this bottom part is still wet so that it kind of just naturally bleeds into it. Okay, I want to add a little bit more darkness. Just concentrate it at the very top, like that. Whoops, see, that's why you have to be careful. Now I'm gonna have to go over it like so. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm happy with uh, the bottom here. I'm going to let this dry before we move on to, actually, second time I've done this, but now that I'm looking at the top, I kind of want to intensify those colors. It looks a little bit too orange for me. Um, so I'm going to grab some yellow. This might be a mistake, but I'm going to just go over it again with the yellow a little bit. And I want to fade out the yellow with water so that it's, um, because we're not using the wet on wet technique, it's not going to naturally blend out. So that's why I'm trying to fade it out with water naturally on both sides there. And again, I'm just, I want to take my darker color here and just go over the bottom and the top ever so slightly. Now I just kind of dipped it in my paintbrush in water and I'm fading out some of that brown. See, that's a lot more of what I was going for when I initially started these clouds, I wanted it to look like this. So I'm glad that I, oh my gosh, see, I do this way too often. It'll just, it's just a little white spot there, no big deal. All right, so we're going to let this completely dry and then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so I think this is mostly dry. Uh, we're going to move on to our trees. So I can very lightly see my trees with the pencil. So perhaps use even darker, like press even harder with your pencil than I did. Um, and I'm going to paint the leaves of my trees first because the leaves are going to be overlapping with uh, the bark of the tree or the trunk of the tree, so I want them to be visible. So my first set of leaves are going to be this really lovely red that I have achieved by using my bright red along with a little bit of black. And just debating how I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna have a bunch of the leaves way up here. And you can either go for kind of abstract leaves or more detailed leaves. And I think I'm gonna do a little bit of both. So I'm grabbing my liner brush here and I just wanna make the ends of the leaves a little bit more realistic so that um, like it's not a complete guess as to what you're painting so I'm I'm kind of going for like a maple leaf uh, look here so I'm just painting the edges of where all my leaves are going to be with more detailed leaves using my liner brush. This is a size one by Windsor Newton, linked in the description if you're interested. And then once I've got sort of the, some details down, I'm just gonna go with the blotchy technique because it's a lot easier in that it fills much more space without needing to be hyper specific. So I'm gonna have another set of leaves over here. I'm gonna 
begin just filling in it. And when you're kind of filling this out, if you're using the same technique I am, which is kind of just blotching it down with a larger brush, make sure you're still leaving um, a tiny bit of white space in between the leaves and that your blotches are very sporadic and not uh, with like rounded edges because this will make it look a lot more realistic. See like this dot right here is quite, if I go in a little bit closer, this one right here is a tiny bit too round. So I'm just making it a little less round. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just, I'm happy with that part. I'm going to have a few leaves coming down a little, little ways down the trunk over here. So I'm just using my liner brush to create those details on um, just the outside portions. You don't have to use red, by the way. You're more than welcome to use orange or yellow. Like I'm gonna incorporate a little bit of yellow later on. I'm gonna have a cluster over here as well I've kind of just switched to my to my bigger brush because it was really taking a long time you can practice on a scrap piece of paper using a bigger brush to create the leaf effect if uh, if you want to so that you don't ruin your progress with what you've painted so far and then when you're happy with the technique that you're using, then just apply it to the painting. Um, or you can totally go ahead and take the time to um, to use a liner brush. Just gonna go back out whoops there you go um what am I gonna do I think I'm gonna leave it like that oh maybe not you know what actually before it dries I'm going to um, add quite a bit more black to my red and I'm just gonna create these darker values in some areas to make it look like there are leaves overlapping And you certainly want to do this while the leaves are still wet, otherwise it kind of doesn't blend in and doesn't look as natural. See here, you could see it sort of just staying the way it is.
See, now there's different values there, so it looks a little bit more realistic, a little bit more detail. I like that. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with my uh, yellow tree. So I'm going to have a yellow maple tree as well. So I'm rinsing my brush here from the red and picking up quite a bit of yellow. And where am I going to have these leaves? So this is my second tree here. So that's what I'm going off of. I'm just adding a few leaves. Dare I overlap them with the red? Maybe some over here as well. I'll have a cluster over here. You can see using my, my bigger brush, it takes much less time, which I am all for, because I'm painting like nine tutorials right now. So <laughs> just want to kind of get through them and not spend an hour on each painting. But you're more than welcome to, of course, like if you're just painting for fun, like take your time, pause the video to do different steps, like you don't have to move at the same pace that I'm moving at. So just like I did with that first one, while that layer is still wet, I'm going to go in with some darker values. So I just picked up some orange on my paintbrush and I'm just adding the orange to some of my leaves just to make it look like there are multiple leaves and layers of leaves. And you achieve that by adding darker values. I'm going <clears> to <throat> go in with just a tad bit of black, even. It's quite watered down, but... So, okay, what we're going to do now is paint the trunks of the trees and it's going to be a little bit challenging to go around the leaves we painted, but we're going to do the best that we can. I'm taking quite a bit of black mixed in with my brown because I want it to look dark. Um, you can always start a little bit lighter and then add black later on. So I'm going to start with, with the big guy here. And I'm kind of, if you want to do what I'm about to do, then you have to work a little bit quickly. But what I am trying to do here is I'm using two paintbrushes, I'm painting the center, and then I'm taking the second paintbrush and fading out the pigment to the sides. Just so that it looks like the sun is hitting the trunk. So I'm just using water to fade out the sides here. But you have to work quickly so that it doesn't dry and then create this harsh line. Okay, 
And then when you get to your leaves, you just have to be careful that you go around them while trying to be as, you know, um, close to them as possible. So while my trunk is still wet, I'm adding some branches to it. And we're gonna be adding some more leaves onto these branches. And you can make as many branches as you want. You don't even have to put leaves on all of them. There we go. I'm pretty satisfied with that. So now I'm going to move on to my second tree here. I'm doing the same thing, picking up that darker pigment, applying it roughly in the center, and then going in with my second paintbrush that just has a little bit of water on it that's been, um, the excess has been dried off on a paper towel. And I'm spreading just the uh, edges of the trunk out so that it looks like there's sun shining. I've run out of pigment here, so I'm just making some more, mixing my two together. And of course, don't forget to add your branches for the, the little tree as well. I have two just up top that are reaching out into my the leaves that I painted. So I'm just painting the branch kind of poking through in some of the areas. And I have another branch out here poking through as well. There we go. Now I'm not too happy with the darkness of my first tree, so I'm going over it again with uh, honestly mostly black this time. I'm trying to use the same technique with the paintbrush where I fade out the sides, but I do want to achieve the desired darkness for this tree. Otherwise, it won't be as dramatic.
That's a little bit better. Okay, so down below here is a tiny bit bare. So what I'm gonna do is have just my second tree. There's just gonna be a little branch coming out. And I'm going to paint some leaves on that just down here. And then I'm also going to paint some kind of twig-like things just coming from the bottom here. And those are also going to have some leaves growing on them. You're welcome to add some more branches, like whatever you feel looks nice and you're happy with. And I'm just, I want mine to have a little bit more detail because the original branches that I painted were quite skimpy looking. <laughs> So I'm just going ahead and adding a little bit more to it. So definitely make it your own. You don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing here. I'm already going off of the reference, like outside of the reference photo that I used. So it's already not looking like the same thing. But so once you're happy with where you've placed all your little branches, you can choose to leave them like they are, or you can add leaves to them, how I'm doing right now. So I'm gonna add some orange, orangey yellow, I suppose, to this random branch that's coming out, out of here. This is going to have slightly different colored leaves. Okay, um, one other thing you can do, like we did with the others, is add those uh, darker values to your leaves to make it look like there are different layers of the leaves. So I'm just going ahead and quickly adding that in before my leaves completely dry. We are essentially finished. I hope you guys enjoyed this autumn painting. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit like on this video, and I'll see you in the next one.